I now have control. So we are recording and I will get started. Thank you everyone uh, for being here. I'm really excited to see so many people excited about learning about Pressbooks. And um, I guess without further ado, I will begin sort of demonstrating uh, Pressbooks EDU. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what the, the overall hosted systems are, and then I'll show you sort of the inner workings of how to create books on them, and then also demonstrate some of these newer features. Um, so for those who are already familiar, there's uh, lots in here for you too. Uh, so just a moment, let me share my screen. Oh, we want to see the binder. Oh, who's got my notebook on the desk? I have it. I okay. have it over there. I want. So wait, so you can, if you're doing something, use it during the day, but just back in my office. I'm getting just a little bit of background noise. Hold on just a moment. Yeah. I'm just going to mute a few people. You can unmute yourself uh, just so that we don't get too much background noise here as well. Okay. Continuing on. Can everyone see my Pressbooks EDU screen? Yes? Okay, fantastic. Okay, so what we're looking at here is what I'm going to use uh, throughout this demo. This is actually, hold on, I'm sorry. Zoom has moved my Zoom window and I'm looking up at it. Okay, hopefully this is, you can all still see my screen. So what we're looking at here is a Pressbooks EDU demo site that I'm going to show you sort of the inside of and demonstrate some key features with. Um, I'm also going to show you sort of an idea, the Open Textbook Network uh, Sandbox, which Karen referenced, is a great example of our brandable uh, standalone uh, Pressbooks networks. Uh, you can see that Open Textbook Network has customized things like their logo, the title of the network, uh, the subtitle, uh, their different colors, uh, how they're using the homepage, et cetera. I'm also going to show you a different example. Um, one of our hosted networks is with Ohio State, and you can see they've used more of the out-of-the-box colors, but they have showcased a bit more of uh, the catalog features on their network. So for instance, they are using the catalog carousel, which you can choose to show on the homepage of your network, uh, and they're also using their catalog for some of their publications. Uh, you can choose uh, to use the catalog or not, uh, to display it on your home instance or not, and then also what uh, books to put into the catalog. So they have a host of books that are public but not yet in the catalog. They also have a host of books that are private that they're still working on. And you can see that there are a variety of books they've chosen to showcase here. And these are um, filterable on different types of variables. Uh, now you can, I will also start by demonstrating uh, the homepage of a web book, which is one of the key features I think of Pressbooks, uh, is the ability to have this beautiful web book that students can go to and it is mobile responsive so they can read uh, the material, you know, if you've made it public, they can read it for free on the web. They can even read it, you know, while they're in transit on their mobile device all of these different things that often students ask us uh, to be able to do. Um, the other nice thing about Pressbooks Networks is you can feature the book exports on the web book homepage. So for instance, uh, here we've chosen to showcase all of the types of exports. Uh, you can choose which exports to showcase and whether or not to showcase them. But often this helps uh, if students request different modalities uh, to read your textbook in. So they may want the EPUB, they may want uh, you know, the PDF if they want to print sections of it, or they may just want to read the web book. And there are also formats here uh, if you're wanting other people to be able to do open and cool things with your book. Um, <clears throat> that is a possibility as well. So getting into the actual network, uh, this is again our private demo network and I'm already logged in as a network manager and I'm going into the back end here. And I see a few things in chat. I'm just going to open the chat window. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so as I'm logged in, you can see that I have a variety of options. And my first, the first thing I'll demonstrate is just how to create a new book. So let's say you are having a faculty member who wants to create a book from scratch. 
they just enter the URL they'd like it to have, the working title for the book. Um, I usually would work on this privately and then create the book. And in a few minutes, we will get into the area where you can begin structuring and editing that book. And the really, the really great thing about Pressbooks, I think, is everything that it does sort of to magically do the formatting for your book. So you don't need to do, you don't need to understand book design, you don't need to know a complicated software, you just put the content in Pressbooks, and Pressbooks does all the things that are required to help it meet different specs for different formats that you may put into different publishing uh, mechanisms. So here is sort of the dashboard of this new book I've created, and then what I would probably do first is add some book info, which is really the metadata for the book. And you can update this at any time and Pressbooks will send this metadata to all the important places in the book. Uh, so for instance, you might want to change the title of the book. You might want to give it a shorter title or a subtitle. You may want to uh, change or add contributors, even people who are not logged into Pressbooks or don't have access to Pressbooks or you don't even want them to have access or they contributed, you know, in a different way, that is easy to do here. So let me pretend that I will create myself as someone without a login on this system and then go back to book info. So now I can choose uh, myself as an author and you can also name multiple people if you would like. Uh, so again, you can specify authors, editors, translators, reviewers, illustrators, and other contributors, which is really nice with open textbooks, which may have all of these uh, who have helped to varying degrees on the book. Uh, you can indicate your imprint as the publisher, the publication date, things like the ISBN. Uh, the language, Pressbooks does have language support for various languages. Um, and that is helpful if you are working in a different language. Uh, often that's something that's supported here. Uh, you would choose your ebook cover to upload here. And then you can specify who owns the copyright. And again, this may be the author, it may be your imprint, it may be the libraries, that is up to you. Uh, we have, we are completely agnostic as to what licenses you would like to use. We of course love to see open content created, but you can create all rights reserved content. Uh, you can use any of the Creative Commons licenses or you could uh, add a different notice or an additional notice, uh, however you'd like, and different descriptions you may wanna add. And when you're done with adding this metadata, you would press save and then all that will be saved for you. And then the next thing I would probably do is start to structure and set up the book. So under organize, organize, this is where you can add different things. So for instance, I might add a forward and then I can tell Pressbooks that's a forward. And then it will know to put it in the right uh, order for the book. Uh, I can also add things like back matter, perhaps you'd like to add an about the publisher here. And again, you can specify the back matter or you can leave things like this miscellaneous uh, depending on your choices. And then you can do the same thing with chapters. I generally discourage people from using numbered chapters here as Pressbooks will automatically number your chapters if you'd like it to. So it's better to use a name of a chapter. And so this is really helpful if you have, for instance, on a pre-existing outline that you'd like to sort of actualize and create containers for, or if you don't have an outline, this may help you create that. Another thing you can do is add parts. So, um, main body is one part, you could have a part two of your book, and you can also edit what the parts are called. So perhaps you have all in one book, you know, biology one, biology two, or um, something to that effect. You can also move these chapters around, uh, reorder them however you would like. And then inside the chapters, you can do some pretty cool things as well. So one of the things I love for educational books are the text boxes we've got pre-formatted for you. 
So you can create content in any of these and it's really nice to break up, you know, you've got an educational uh, book and you don't want it to be all text. So maybe you have some, you know, little assignments here or for reflection or something like that. You can change what these say. Key takeaways are really nice. Uh, learning objectives, whatever you'd like to do with these. And then you can add your content into Pressbooks in a variety of ways. I'm just going to save this as an example. Um, the first way would be to write in Pressbooks, which may be very familiar of an interface to you if you use WordPress at all. Um, it should look very, very familiar. Uh, if you prefer, you can copy and paste your text into the chapters or for educational users, one thing that I suggest is the one click importer. Excuse me while I cough. <coughs> Um, so here, if you have a clean Word document and um, you'd like to upload that in one, one click, that is very easy to do. So I'm going to find one right here. One thing you should do before doing this, where is my demo materials? Uh, One thing you want to do before doing this is make sure that all of your chapter headings are H1s and that will help Pressbooks know to recognize the chapters and break them up. And so you can decide which of those chapters uh, in again in the document. These are H1s which of these chapters to import and click import and they will import into this main interface here. You'll see them there. I see a chat real quick. So I'm going to You know, Heather, I'm not sure about the text boxes in specific, but I know they're a relatively new feature and we are very adamant um, about making anything new that we add to Pressbooks accessible and we do care a lot about accessibility. So I would doubt that they have problems um, in those in particular. And I can talk about accessibility in general uh, later in the call. Uh, so let's, pres let's take a moment and assume that super definitely and let us know if you do find any difficulties because that's something we would want to know about um, so let's assume for a moment that I have completed adding all of my content to Pressbooks um, one of the things I would do next is I would apply a theme you can choose from any of the 20 themes that we have uh, and you would just click activate if you want to change the theme. I'm going to leave it as the McLuhan theme for now. Uh, that is because the McLuhan theme and six other themes out of the 20 have some advanced theme options that make it even easier to do some customizations. So before you, uh, before you get your final exports, you'll want to specify a few formatting things and then Pressbooks will automatically take care of them. So things like two level table of contents, if that's something you want, uh, if you would like to display uh, copyright licenses, different copyright licenses on the different chapters, you can do that. In this case, what's really nice is with these theme options, you can customize things like the headers to be all, for instance, your university color is something you could do. You could customize the exercises that I showed you or those boxes to be a color that you like. Uh, and you can, of course, save your changes for all of these customizations. There are also options that apply only to the web book, and you can make those decisions and save them here. Uh, PDF has a variety of things you might want to choose, the most important of which is probably the trim size, which would be for your print-on-demand provider. Um, often we've seen, you know, eight and a half by 11 textbooks, but it could be anything, it's up to you. So you would choose that here, and then there's no reflowing on your end. Pressbooks just automatically generates a file that's compatible with that trim size. And then if you really do want to start customizing margins or doing some other things like how, how big is a widow or an orphan, you know, setting those parameters, you can do that here. You can also do things like changing the running heads and footers to be exactly what you'd like. And again, saving as you go. Uh, the ebook options, probably the most important is whether or not to compress images. If you're putting your book into Amazon, for instance, they will charge you the bigger your book is based on the megabytes. And so this is one way to reduce that overall uh, size of the book digitally. And then after all of this, uh, you would go to export and simply click, uh, select the outputs you want to export in, export your book. And while that is going, I'm going to take a look at our chat. 
and this takes just one or two minutes or so. Okay, that's a good question. Anita is asking, uh, Pressbooks retain styles when importing Word docs. Uh, does the theme you choose override the word formatting? And the answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. So I would say the default is probably yes. We would encourage people not to do too much formatting uh, in the Word doc itself. Uh, one thing in particular that I've seen people do that, I, that you definitely should not do is I've seen people type, you know, the five spaces to indent every pa every paragraph in their Word document and then that kind of a thing is not going to translate to Pressbooks. What you want to do is have that be universally changeable under theme options. And sometimes that kind of formatting can interfere. Um, cursor hover functionality. Um, that's a good question. Let us, I'm trying to think of a book that has a, that has an image in it where we could try that. Um, let me mull on that and come back to that um, in the web book and we can, we can test that out. Um, and if not, I can put that in as a feature request as well. Uh, you can add alt text to your uh, to your to your photos, etc. When you are adding them, the media uploader works very similarly to in WordPress. You just add media, you select a file. Uh, again, I'm in some demo materials. Here's a diagram. And I can add the alt text here. And then insert that into the chapter. And I would probably, of course, if this is not decorative, I would add a description. I would maybe even add a caption. You can do all of that. And then save. Uh, and then your image is inserted. And let me just check my list of things that, oh, um, one of the new things we've added in the past year or so is actually video, making it easier to make your video look embedded. Uh, and an example of that might be to pull any video URL. I'm just going to take this one. And if you just add it to the visual editor and save, I think I took the wrong URL, hold on. I think I actually need this URL. Hold on. Or I may have try a different chapter. There may be some odd code in there. And you can see uh, the video looks embedded. Now, this is something that we've enabled for trusted sites, uh, things like uh, Vimeo, uh, YouTube, Wistia, um, sites that educational users are using and that we know are not a security risk. Uh, and then in the non, in the outputs where this will not uh, actually translate, we have a placeholder. So it will say, here's a video, here's where you can go watch the video as well. And I do see some questions in the chat. Okay, so MathJax is not something that's in Pressbooks. I see a question here about that. Uh, and that is it, but what we have is LaTeX and we have two ways to use LaTeX. So there's LaTeX or there's Quick LaTeX. And I understand different people like different ones for different reasons. So we've enabled them both on Pressbooks. Usually that will be sufficient, but again, if there's something that you need that's not available in those, you know, let us know and we're open to exploring that. Um, another cool thing that we've added lately is H5P, which I know Karen wanted me to demonstrate today. So going back to my test chapter, editing this. Um, actually, I'm going to go into a new book where I've enabled H5P. This is enabled on the book level. So if you want your faculty uh, on your network to have access to this, you can enable it. And then they can enable it on certain books uh, where they may want it. So let's say I would like to create, for instance, a quiz. I can do that by adding new content. 
and I'll just take a multiple choice example here. Say this is the correct answer and this is not the correct answer. And then I'm going to click create. And now you'll see I have a short code. I take the short code and I go into a chapter. I'm just going to create a new chapter here. And I enter the short code and press uh, save or create uh, whatever the red button happens to stay, say at that time. And then you'll see that the quiz is here. And this is a really nice way where you can break up the text in your book. So you can have text and then you can add like a self-reflection with an exercise box and then you could add more text and then a video perhaps and then more text and then later you have sort of a quiz at the end of the chapter. What did you learn? Um, you know, is this true or false? You know, it's just a fun way to make the book a little more interactive. Um, another thing that I know, oops, let me check chat. Oh, um, there's not a tutorial, but if you, like, that's definitely something we would help you with. Um, so we do have some documentation on that. Um, so yeah, actually, Anita, if I can, can you, uh, Anita, could you actually send me your email and I can send you all the documentation because there is something that will walk you through this pretty easily. And if you run into problems, like we can help you at support as well. Thank you. Um, so Justina, I see your questions, the analytics. Um, so I think what you're referring to is grade pass back into, for instance, a learning management system. And that is not available at this time. It is something some people have asked us for. And we are currently looking at um, asking if there are clients who are interested in funding that feature. That is something we are open to. Uh, but in terms of analytics in general, not analytics tied to the quiz questions themselves, but for the system itself, what you can do is you can integrate your network with Google Analytics by adding your UA code from Google Analytics into Pressbooks, uh, and then your Google Analytics account will collect the data, and there are certain things you can do, filters you can set on that end where you can see the usage of the book, etc. cetera. Uh, so that is possible as well. Thank you. Um, okay, and one other thing that I definitely want to demonstrate um, I'm not sure how we are in time, is Hypothesis. And so I am currently logged into my Hypothesis account. And here is a book where I know that Hypothesis is enabled. And people have already commented publicly on this chapter. And you can see that these annotations, they look like highlights. And then if you click into them, uh, if they are these are some public comments uh, and then you can see people's feedback and you can use this in a variety of ways. You could see uh, people can reflect on the text so it makes it more interactive. People could provide feedback if, for instance, they find a typo. Uh, people, I've seen a lot of people use this for peer review because you can also create private groups in Hypothesis. So if I wanted to create a private group, for instance, uh, I could do something like Okay, uh, so you'll see that there is now, there should now be Sorry, I've actually somehow lost my cursor ability here. Ah. I'm going to create this group. And in theory, if I were on this book, logged in uh, to Hypothesis, which I will do again right here. I can then find the private group and add some comments in this group on the book. Or I can even add a new private group uh, at that point. So other things, let's pretend that there I would be using this public group. I can select something and then annotate it. And then I can add my annotation here. Uh, and then 
I'm not actually going to post this because it is in fact a live, a live book and I don't want to post it publicly, but you can, you can see uh, the options that I would have here. I could even just make these annotations for myself. Oh, one other thing that I should definitely demonstrate that is relatively new is the cloning feature. Getting back to my test book here, going into edit, back in my system. Let's say I am a faculty member and I am very in open to doing uh, some open textbook work, but I'm very afraid to create my own open textbook from scratch. So um, I am aware, however, of an open textbook that I've been using, but possibly dissatisfied with parts of that I would like to improve on. So what you can do with your uh, Pressbooks EDU system is you can clone any openly licensed public book built on Pressbooks. Uh, so for instance, using, using this book as my example here, because it is uh, public and openly licensed. All I need to do to clone a book into my system is to enter the URL of the original, enter the URL I'd like the new one to have, uh, press clone it, and then just a few minutes later uh, a new bookshell will appear that I can go into. And that will show up under my catalog very shortly. Okay. So here is that clone and now this clone is completely editable. And we've recently improved this feature, so even more things uh, do come over when it's cloned. Uh, and now I can get into this, this, I can decide to delete a chapter, I can decide to add a chapter, I can decide to edit a chapter, anything that I want to do to this material that is within the bounds of the license um, with proper attribution, then I can do that and generate a new book relatively quickly. One other thing, and I'm going to try to find it here, We've actually improved, I'm just going to find my new test book. We've improved the media attributions in a book. Mm. Liz, after you show us attributions, Heather has a question about how to export a press book for upload into another instance of yes. press book from a different server. Absolutely. Uh, just a moment. Uh, so there is a way now where, for instance, if you're making an open textbook, here's a use case example for this. Say I got um, an openly licensed Creative Commons uh, image from Flickr or something like that, and it matches the license of my book, but I still want to credit the source. So here I might like to enter that source URL. I want to credit the author, maybe the author's website if they're a photographer or something who's letting you use this. Then I can choose the license for the image itself so that future adapters of this open textbook don't have a problem figuring out uh, whether or not they can also use this image, uh, etc or if you did this by special permission, or this just decomplexifies so much of the media attributions. And then um, if there was any adaptation to the image that you did, you might indicate that, that here as well. Okay, so yes, so the question was, can you cover how to export a press book for upload into another instance of press books on a different server? So generally, if someone has their own instance of press books, the easiest way to do that is going to be to clone it if it's public and openly licensed. Now that isn't always the case, um, but if it is, that is your easiest, fastest, instantaneous way. Another way would be, um, for instance, if you know that that person and they are asking you, hey, can I adapt this? And uh, they, they don't, they need, you know, they can't do that for whatever reason. Maybe your book is all rights reserved. Then what you can do is you can send them the XML export. 
And for instance, if this is, if you've chosen to show your book exports on the homepage and you've chosen to showcase the XML, again, both choices that are up to you on your own network, whether or not to do that. And that's a choice you can make at the book level as well. So let's say the XML, you've chosen to surface that on your uh, book homepage as is done here. That person can just download this document and upload it and deal with, and work with it on their own side. Now, if for instance these these are not service, they may need to contact you for the XML. That's the easiest way, I would say. Does that answer the question? Okay, great. Super. Um, so let me check if I've covered. I think I've covered the things that I would normally cover and some of the new things. So I guess, Karen, uh, I would ask if there's any questions on anything I've demonstrated or other, other things you'd like to know. Yes, I put that question to everyone who's here. What else right. can Liz talk about or maybe show you something again? Um, all right, Lauren's got a question. Great. Um, okay. So, so right now there are, that's interesting. So the question I'll read it is how have other institutions that have used H5P and hypothesis dealt with the issue of student identifying information and student grade data being shared in the book? That's one question. And I will address that at this point, there are no, there is no student identifying information or student grade data that is passed back to the professor. So it is not an issue right now. Uh, I know that there are some institutions that have been very forward thinking, perhaps on their open source systems, or that are asking us to look into this feature as well. So when we do the R&D on this, that's of course something that would be top of mind. Uh, but at Pressbooks, we never want to do anything that's invasive or exploitive of student privacy. Uh, so, so that is something that we would not, we would not exploit that information or showcase that um, for for other people. Uh, the annotations, uh, that's really up to the instructor. So often people are using hypothesis for public comment and annotation. And that is something they are asking their students to do because they believe that there is power in that public commentary or interactivity of a book. Now, if you wanted, for instance, to keep that uh, to have those comments be private, uh, I would do the method that I showed you um, where Basically, you make a private group, you ask, you tell students what the private group is, you tell them how to log in to Hypothesis and comment in the private group. So that way their, their annotations aren't out there publicly attached to them. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, like you could tell them they can use pseudonyms if that's something you're amenable to. Again, it's really kind of how you're using it. Are you using it to teach digital literacy and to what extent? Um, yeah, so, so I guess that that would be the answer. And again, Hypothesis and H5Ps, these are third party plugins. So um, they do both have privacy policies and I'm sure you, you can look those up and see, you know, if there's anything that is stored on their end, even if you're using, for instance, the private feature, et cetera. Um, are there preferred themes for textbooks? Yes, Cheryl, hi, Cheryl. Um, yes, so what I would do for textbooks. Um, McLuhan is one of our new themes uh, for textbooks. There's also a variety of, the of themes that have the additional uh, theme options. So I try to suggest that people use those newer themes. Every two weeks we're rolling out a new theme or an old theme with new theme options that are enhanced. But for now, I think it's it's best if you want to do some customization to your book to make it easy on yourself. So I recommend the seven themes that have the most advanced theme options always. Um, McLuhan is a big one that's educational. Oh, anyone had success creating tables? I used HTML to insert a table. It looked fine online but didn't flow across the pages in the PDF. Inserted a page break. Can you point me to any link sources for CSS HTML customization? Okay, that's a little bit of a harder one, but what I can tell you is that in Pressbooks EDU networks, we just added uh, the table press plugin, which is again, a third party plugin. And I'll show you a little bit how that works. And literally I tried this for the first time today. So uh, be patient with me. I know that I have this installed here. So this makes, uh, you can create tables the old way in Pressbooks where you're just sort of uh, using the table tool uh, which is just a little less fluid. Uh, so here, if I want to add a new table with table press, I can do a few more sophisticated things a lot more easily without 
HTML and CSS so that basically you don't need the answer to that question. You would just do it this way. Um, so, and I can specify the number of columns here, number of rows, can add the table. And then um, here, I'm going to dismiss the handy features here. You can do things like you could select and combine the cells in this row, for instance. You could select a row and hide that row, duplicate that row, add rows, uh, columns. Uh, you could make the first row the table header or not. Uh, you could do alternating row colors. Uh, and again, you can do a lot of different things to really get uh, very, very deep in customizing these. You can enable visitors to sort your table. Uh, you can enable horizontal scrolling, uh, which may be better for the web, for instance, than a PDF, but it is one option here. Uh, and the visitor, maybe they want pagination, um, pagination. You can enable that as well. So more options here, and then you would just save your changes. And the other thing that you could do is then just take the short code, excuse me one minute. <coughs> Let's say I have saved my changes here actually. And then I will take my short code and pop it into a chapter. And again, this is a test, so there's not a lot of very real design or thought that went into that table creator. Just press create. And then you can see, okay, so I really should have customized that more for the demo, but you can see that it will insert the table. And what this enables you to do is just a lot more granular. Um, all of those options I just showed you are so much more involved uh, than those that were in our old table creator, uh, where you can just say, here's my table. And then you start ending up needing to sort of get into the more into the HTML or custom uh, CSS to start customizing those. But again, there are the two options. Um, I see a question. You could keep the H5P. Okay, uh, thank you for that. And I guess, I think that brings us current with the questions. So I will ask uh, what else I can cover. It's also fine if you'd like to see something again. Okay, here's a question from Anita. Will hypothesis annotations work in an unpublished private textbook for author mm -hmm. collaboration? It is my understanding that yes. Yes, you can enable hypothesis uh, annotations on private works. The one thing to know though is that once you have done a public hypothesis annotation, that can't be necessarily removed from the book. So if you are doing this for, for instance, you know, copy editing comments or peer review comments, I highly suggest that you create the private group and then tell the participants in that endeavor how to get into that private group. Other questions? I'll also take this moment to clarify that in the OTN sandbox, um, you have a lot of flexibility about what you can do, but you may not be able to do everything that Liz has talked about today. She's really covering all of the um, opportunities and resources available if you had an institutional interest. Yes, that is fair. You see this question from Cheryl? Asking yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so I see the question from Cheryl. How does Pressbooks EDU differ from the regular Pressbooks available to the public? And there are several ways. So the first important note is that the Pressbooks EDU networks are your own brandable standalone Pressbooks network that only your content is on. Uh, so for instance, if you are running an open program, you may want to showcase all of the titles that you've created over the years in the catalog and you just wanna say, you know, this is what, you know, U of A, for instance, has created for their open program. Aren't we wonderful? Like, here's the 20 books that we did last year. That's a, one really important use case for the networks themselves. The other thing is that some of these educational features I've demonstrated are not uh, available on Pressbooks.com. So H5P, 
for instance, uh, that plugin is only available on the EDU networks. Uh, Table Press only available on the EDU networks. Uh, book downloads, uh, showcasing those on the homepage so that the students can have these in the different modalities. Also um, on the EDU networks, and then of course the EDU networks come with um, a variety of things like you know training for your network managers and your users and you know a certain level of support for your network managers premium support expedited support different things that would not be available to an individual faculty user on pressbooks.com oh so someone is asking about the difference between the word network and pressbooks networks and what that means and so let me clarify that so the pressbooks edu networks are hosted by us that is our offering where we will host an entire standalone Pressbooks network for you um, and your institution. Uh, and that is just for you. Now, depending on the size of that network and which plan you opt for, it may be on a shared server on our end or it may be on its own server if you have an enormous instance, um, really robust and you need that. That is something that we've offered to select clients. So, so the network, when I use that term, it is really the standalone brandable network. Um, and we are doing all of the development, all of the maintenance, all of the updates. Um, you don't need to any bug fixes. You, there is nothing that a developer would do to your network. So no technical staff are required on your end. Um, you would typically choose some network managers who are our point people within your institution. So, you know, typically a librarian or instructional designers or a combination, um, administrators who are helping the faculty create the open textbooks. Um, I hope that answers the question. Let me check the chat here. Um, no, it's not. The network and the server are not synonymous. So the network sits on a server. Uh, the network is rather than, for instance, like pressbooks.com is one network that thousands and thousands of individual authors might be using. Uh, but they don't have any brandability really within that. Um, they don't have anything that is their own um, on a much smaller server space and the fact that these uh, networks are on a different server enables us to do a lot of sort of the unusual things, offer some of the plugins that I've showed you. Um, we can do that because we're only affecting a much smaller uh, space, uh, so to speak. Uh, and yes, you can choose uh, your domain and again, depending on your plan, that might be a custom domain if there's something you own that you want to use or it may be a subdomain, something uh, open textbook network .pressbooks .pub, uh, anything like that. And yes, um, I see another instance of the Pressbooks. Yes, basically, yes. So instance of the Pressbooks software and associated databases is probably a better way to put it. Yes. Um, and so, okay. Great, and I'm glad to answer. If you want to email me at sales at pressbooks.com, I'm glad to nitpick even further on that um, and ask our developers if there's something deeper than what you're you're asking here as well. Okay, super. Uh, also, I saw a question up here about when creating a new book, whether or not to make that visible to the public. Um, it's something you can change at any time. So if you're creating an OER book and you already have the content and it's already been vetted, like you could easily start off with the book being public and you know build it in Pressbooks as a public book. Often what happens is people are beginning to build the book content while they're making the book in Pressbooks. And so maybe there will still be some editing later. So parts of it might be public, uh, parts of it might be private, but the overall setting will dictate whether or not you can um, make the individual uh, parts of it public. So for instance, let's say I have the overall setting set to public, I could still choose not to show any of these things uh, on the web. So there's different and more granular ways to do that. You could choose, for instance, to show half the book and be working on the other half. Uh, but if you choose to make it entirely private, then that's the best way if you have something which you're starting from scratch, don't have any of the content, et cetera. That way nobody finds the URL and says, oh, this is empty or whatever the case may be. Uh, animated GIFs, um, I'm not sure about that. Um, I would have to find out. Let me actually ask that. I will find out if you want to, um, I have your email, Anita, so I can follow up with you after. 
Okay, um, are there any other questions? And I should also state that my email, you can reach me at sales at pressbooks.com um, with any questions that maybe if you think, oh, this is kind of outside the, you know, the, the call, like feel free to email those to me privately as well. Yes. Anyone okay. else have questions about the sandbox, press books, what you've seen today, what you wish for tomorrow? We have been recording this session, so um, probably by next week. Uh, we'll have the video ready for you. You can find it on YouTube. There's a link to where the previous demo Liz hosted lives. And so this is where you will find, excuse me, the new video. Call from wireless caller. <laughs> I still have a landline, apologies. Um, okay, I think that, uh, oh, Denise, can you post a contact name for subscription sales? Yes, that is Liz, sales at pressbooks.com. Thank you. And then, oh, Heather posted a link about gifts. So maybe oh, thank you. answer to the question. Fabulous. Well, thank you very much, Liz, for leading us through all of the many things that Pressbooks can do. There are many people in the OTN community who have experience with Pressbooks, so feel free to um, bring your questions to our community as well as the excellent help guides and support that Pressbooks can offer. If you have any questions about getting started in the sandbox or want more details on that, please let me know. Always happy to help. I'm just gonna put um, the link to that again in here. And it's great to see you all. And thank you for joining us until next time. Yes, thank you all for being here.